Hey, it's Ben here, and here in this tutorial, we're going to have a look at a couple of different ways in which we can control image duration, either when we've got our clips already imported and down on the timeline, or when we're kind of bringing them in for the first time. So for this particular tutorial, we're going to create a new event in here so we can drop our images into their own events. We're going to go to File, New Event, and we'll call this Images. And then we're going to pull a whole bunch of images into this event. So we'll come to our finder here where we've got some images and I'm going to grab all these JPEGs. We'll drop these in here. So the events just help to kind of keep different parts of your piece of work separate. So we've got a series of different images here, some strange textures, some space invaders, uh, tiled characters, uh, the London Eye and a couple of other images in here. So let's create a new timeline. So we'll go to File, New, project which is our new edit and then in here we're going to use a 1080p edit 1920 by 1080 we'll call this image sequence so when we grab all these images and i hold down shift here and drag them all down to the timeline you can see that something strange has happened the first one uh, for some reason the way i clicked it or uh, just because of the selection of it has come out a little bit shorter so not too worried about that because once I have my images down on the timeline you can see if I just highlight one of them it is 10 seconds long so if I select this clip hold down control and tap D I'm able to type in a new duration for that image in hours minutes seconds and frames so if we come down here we want this to be say three seconds long I would type in three period and that will make a three second duration. And if I wanted to do three and a half seconds, this is a 30 frames per second project. So it would be three period one five, three seconds and 15 frames, and that will adjust it slightly. Now, if I wanna change all of these, I can highlight all my clips and I can do control and D, and then I can type in three period one five and that will make them all exactly the same length so even that first one that was a bit shorter it will now be the same length so let's just come to our finder again so if I grab these clips now and drag them down to the timeline you can see I can drag them straight onto the timeline they're coming in at that shorter duration that I had before so each of these clips here is one second and 15 frames and the reason that they're that uh, particular duration is because in my Final Cut Pro preferences I have my still image duration set to 1.5 seconds. So basically we can control our still image duration when we actually bring it into Final Cut Pro um, through this. So if I change this to 0.5 and we come to these clips again, drop them onto the timeline, you can see they come in shorter. So we can actually control exactly how long we want those clips to be. Now you can see it's doing it kind of strangely as half a second rather than frames but if we highlight this again and type in period one uh, so one tenth of a second then you can see if when we drag this on they're going to be shorter again still and if we come to our timeline and zoom in a little bit so we can grab one of these clips you can see it's three frames long so if I come to this, you can see if I use the down arrow here, I can't change it to less than one tenth of a second. So we do have a limit to this duration. Um, so essentially, if we do want to get those kind of one frame clips, so if we're doing a stop motion or something like that, then we need to use Control and D and type in one, and that will give us our one frame clip, which is going to play back very quickly there. But you can see you can control uh, things here quite nicely for longer durations. So if we want our clips all to be 3.5 seconds long, then we can do that. And then when we grab our clips in from the finder, when we drag them down, they will all be exactly 3.15 seconds. So three seconds and 15 frames. So that's a couple of different ways of adding your clips to the timeline and controlling the duration, either by using Control and D or by using the preferences to kind of set a duration in seconds. Um, if we close this, let's just grab these clips and I'm going to drag these up to be connected clips. Now, if I change the duration of these, so Control and D and type in one frame, we're going to end up with a problem. Basically, there's going to be a gap between all of those clips. So I'm going to do Command and Z just to undo that. In order to stop that from happening, so to keep those clips together, I'm going to use Command and G to change those into a connected storyline. So now when I do Control and D, we'll type in five frames. 
so just five. That will shorten them all, but because they're in that connected storyline, they'll all wrap together and we can grab this darker gray bar around them and we can move them around as we want to and duplicate them and all that kind of stuff. So there's a few different ways in which we can modify our clip durations in Final Cut Pro 10. Hopefully that's useful. I know I've been asked a little bit about how to do it on import and also on the timeline as well. Um, and Control and D is definitely a super useful shortcut that I use when I'm doing any kinds of presentations and that type of stuff. So if you have any questions about this or particular suggestions, then do go ahead and ask me. Um, one other thing is that all these images are slightly smaller than my 1080p timeline. We can also do adjustments to multiple clips in our inspector as well. So I can transform these up and because I have them all selected here, they'll all transform up. And we could also do a copy and paste attributes effect as well. Um, but there's a lot of things you can do to multiple images on the Final Cut Pro 10 timeline, such as control the duration, such as control the scale, edit, copy, and then edit paste attributes function is really useful, but that's for a, another tutorial. So I hope this one's been useful. If you have any questions, leave comments below. If you have questions about what you'd like me to cover or request for what you'd like me to cover in the next tutorial, then uh, please do leave them. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video.